Alaska, of course, known for its beautiful wilderness and its Arctic temperatures, which you could imagine would make creating safe and reliable infrastructure pretty difficult. One Alaskan city has a plan that the mayor of Nome, Alaska says should be matched across the state. So they're currently working on plans for Alaska's northernmost deep water port, which he says would help diversify Alaska's economy. Mayor Richard Benville is not just trying to bring infrastructure money to the state, but also critical tourism dollars. In a tourism video released, 20, uh, released right after his 2016 inauguration, he showed us his unique promotional style. Life is wonderful. My name is Richard Benville, and I'm fortunate enough and happy and proud to be the mayor of Nome. You gotta go? No, oh, well, I've got clients in just a little bit. I have a tour company. Hello. Hello, Central. <laughs> we can just kind of walk around a little bit. Wasn't that an unabashed plug? Okay. Uptown. The arts are indicative of the, the culture, and skin sewing <laughs> is not easy. <laughs> so here to discuss Nome's infrastructure and more is the mayor himself. Thank you so much for joining us, sir. My absolute pleasure. So, Mr. Mayor, tell us about this infrastructure project uh, that's going on. Have, As I understand it, it's, it's last year 785 vessels came through when 30 years ago it was only built to accommodate 40 or 50. That's yeah. called climate change. Right. And it's having an incredible effect on the far north. Mm -hmm. um, could just a couple of statements to kind of set a stage, yeah, if, please, if you will. Please. Please. Um, there are only two ways to get from the Atlantic Ocean to the Pacific Ocean by water in the Northern Hemisphere. And they are the Panama Canal, and the other one is the Bering Strait. And I live about 70 miles from the Bering Strait, and where it is more accessible to get into the Arctic Ocean. Uh, I was just in New York City the last several days. The temperature in New York was about two degrees different than the temperature in Nome. And that's wow. what's happening. Wow. We get ice, you know, covered all around our port and all around our harbor, but the ice is thinner, the water is warmer, the ice breaks up sooner, forms later. It's it's going crazy. Berries ripen at a different time, fish come back at a different time, mm. and people are coming. But you know, Sagar, if I may, mm. uh, in addition to the tourism thing, which I'm in tourism, I have a tour company. The strategic importance of the Bering Straits is absolutely unbelievable. The state of Alaska has more than half of the coastline of the entire United States of America. Right. That blows my mind. Yeah. And with that goes a huge risk. I'm, I'm an old man. I grew up in the Cold War. My father was in the Air Force. He was a dentist in the Air Force. I remember the Cold War. I'm not a saber rattler at all, but you know, I think it was Churchill who said, if you don't learn from history, sometimes you're doomed to mm -hmm. repeat it. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of history we don't want to repeat. So I keep it for 40, you know, we're about 100 miles from Russia, and we, I do tourism with Russia, not as much as I'd like to. I'd like to see that open. Uh, but from resources, accessibility of the, bear, of the Arctic Ocean, and you know, we have a thing called the Polar Code. And the Polar Code does not allow you ships to bring in heavy fuel, all of these different types of waste. So what is happening is is really incredible. Well, this is interesting because it, it almost seems that climate change has made your city more accessible. Is that right? Is that it has in made a sense it, right? In, so it in has a made sense. traffic on the Bering yes. Strait. So Secretary of State Mike Pompeo actually made this yes. uh, point a couple of days ago. Yes, he said that actually warming temperatures in the Arctic are making it so that trans uh, trans Arctic. Uh, the Transarctic Passage is made easier, mm -hmm. and it will create new opportunities there. Lots of new yeah. opportunities. And it's, you know, as, as, as a species, mm -hmm. one of the things that we have done forever, and sometimes painfully so, is to, is to extend and to expand our culture, our religions, our, all of these different things. The Romans did it. Mm -hmm. You know, in England, Hadrian uh, colonized England. Uh, and Hadrian's Wall is all about that. So this, this, this effort to communicate. I am fortunate as mayor that I go to a lot of conventions and symposiums in Arctic countries. Uh, Norway, Finland, Greenland, Iceland. Iceland's very cool. Uh, they're <laughs> all very cool. They're all, they're all wonderful. Uh, and my takeaway is the same. The Swedes, the Norwegians, the Icelanders, the Greenlandic people, the Norwegians are not looking at the future. They're in it. They are in it as we speak. In the United States of America, unfortunately, we're slow to go. Mm. 
icebreakers. We have one, and half the time it's in Antarctica. The Bering Sea is a very important ocean from a fishing say, you know, standpoint. I believe I'm doing the Wilson Center here later today. And it's all about resources. It's all about development. But what people don't, I, my tour company, I still have a lot of people like from Kansas and wonderful Midwest and all mm -hmm. over the country who, who will look at me and go, Richard, why are we an Arctic nation? Mm -hmm. And I want to gently say, well, look at a map. Right. <laughs> look at a map. <laughs> Because it, it, we are a huge Arctic nation. Well, and how do so? How do people in Nome feel about climate change? Then do they feel like it's a positive for them? That's a very difficult question to ask because you're asking a question that really doesn't have an answer because it's happening. You know, it's a fact. Whether it's good um, or bad. The populate the demographic of Nome, Alaska, three thousand eight hundred and fifty people, not connected wow. by road. We're five hundred and fifty miles to the nearest highway. Wow. Uh, that's not a lot of people. We are 58% Native Alaskan. Mm -hmm. Native Alaskan. During the gold rush, which is what caused Nome to be there in the first place, um, it, it, that was not the case. But the demographic today is very, and we're a subsistence part of the world. People hunt and fish and do those things because that's the culture that's been 10,000 years. That's amazing. So to many, and we sit, the Nome is a, has a seat on the Arctic's Waterway Safety Committee, which is about the, the effort to preserve subsistence. But with climate change, fish are going differently, coming differently. All of the, 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 the we had a, a cold spot in the Bering Sea not far from Nome that has disappeared mm -hmm. in not 10 years, one year. Wow. Gone. Mm -hmm. Wow. Gone. So fish that would normally be there are migrating north. So there's these incredible changes that are coming. So how do they feel? I think expectant. We're surrounded by about 17 very small villages of just several hundred people. But they're very progressive people. They've been the Eskimo people, which is a word that is politically not very popular today, are among the most adaptive people on the planet. Yeah. Because they've had to, to be. be. They've had to be exactly yeah. right. And and it's you know this is their their world. So how long have how long have you been in Nome? I've been in Nome for thirty years, and before that, Barrow for ten years. And where when did you start really seeing these apparent changes from climate change? About where you were was were in you know irrefutable probably ten fifteen years ago, uh, and the, and this it, the climate change is very interesting because in one way it's planet time and very slow, in another sense. It's very fast. The rapidity by which this is all coming to pass is staggering. Mm -hmm. I'm a little bit of a gardener, and I live in permafrost, which is also being impacted. And, and you know, people real, don't realize very often that when you melt permafrost, permafrost holds in check right. methane. Right. Mm. Which we will release. And if you, if you thaw it, right. exactly. And I know places on my tour where I can, and they're right in a right in a good year, can kind of go under an ice lens, and you could smell the methane. Hmm. You could smell it. That's what's happening. My snapdragons bloom until mid October. It used to be mid-September, hmm. so everything salmon returning at different times. It's a very, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to kind of keep up with it. Yeah. But it's happening very quickly. Interesting. Final question for you, Mr. Mayor. What do, what do you need from Washington? What is it what that brings you to town? What is it the discussion that you think is missing here that could impact people so far out on the other side of the country? My mission, yeah. if you want to call Please. it such, is to make people aware, to make the American public aware of what is happening and how it affects the United States. It affects us in absolutely every politically, economically. It affects everything. And, and it's very exciting. Mm -hmm. It's scary, but it's also very exciting. This, you know, when I was a kid, the world is getting smaller. Oh boy. I work with a group, uh, Inter Intercontinental Railroad, and they want to build a, a, a railroad spur from Canada up to the Seward Peninsula, and then a tunnel under the Bering Strait to connect with the Trans-Siberian Railroad. Wow. That's, it's that's thinking outside. Wow. That's thinking outside the box. Uh -huh. That's what we need to continue to do. And we must, we, must be, we must be aware that we're not alone. We work with eight nations, and those nation, nations are the stewards of the Arctic. 
We also I have an interview later on today or tomorrow with a, a, a Chinese expert because the Chinese are fascinated and interesting and very serious indeed mm -hmm. uh, about building icebreakers. The Russians. And the, the, I, I, I'm going to go to Vladivostok next year. I, just, I can't wait because we have a good relationship with the Russians. We don't, we don't see enough of them because it's still, there are still remnants of the Cold War, mm. which I remember very, very well. So, but as far as those sort of things, the trade, the accessibility of it, the tourism. I'm in tourism, 30 years, my company's 30 years old, and I made up a, a saying, and I'm sure I'm not the first one. If people can get there, they will go. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They're selling tickets to go into, you know, in orbit. Uh, they're buying tickets to Crystal Serenity. Uh, three years ago, it came through Nome. A thousand people, the largest ship ever to go through the Northwest Passage. But it's more than that. And I've been working with ships going through Northwest Passage for 20 years. Mm -hmm. uh, the German Hapag Lloyd. And we're getting more and more ships. This year we have, and I think this mm -hmm. is fascinating, the, um, the Hertegurden, which is a Norwegian cruise ship company, has a new ship called the Raoul Amundsen. And, they, Raul, and right. Raul Amundsen was the man who was the first to navigate. To the South Pole, I think, right? Well, yeah. there's a, still a conversation about that. <laughs> Hello, Central. I yeah. can't deal with that because I got... And there's, you know, there's climate change yeah. in the Antarctica. I was reading this the other day. There's a, 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 a ice shelf the size of Florida, mm -hmm. huh. which is about to break off. Wow. Right. So I do have actually one yes. very, like, concrete question for you. So when, when you're going home, how do you get there? Like, how do you get to know? What is it going to look like? You sit a lot. Uh, I go, <laughs> Bring a lot of books. I go, I see, when I leave Monday, I'll go from Reagan uh -huh. to Seattle. Uh -huh. And that's five hours. Yeah. To Anchorage, to which is about three and a half hours. Okay. And then the next morning I go to Nome, and I'll be home by noon in Nome, Alaska, my little hometown. <laughs> <laughs> Love there it. There you go. Thank well, you thank very you much, Mr. Mayor. My pleasure. Thank you here. for having me, and thank you for your very good question. Thank, thank you, sir. <laughs> we'll have more rising after this.